good afternoon on this uh, rainy Wednesday. Um, I appreciate the turnout in spite of the rain and in spite of the weather. Um, this is an important event. Uh, this is an important town hall meeting. Uh, I'm joined here uh, by Dr. Ken Davis, who's the president and CEO of the Mount Sinai Health System, and by Dr. Dennis Charney, who's the dean of the Mount Sinai Medical School. Uh, and we're collectively here uh, to talk about uh, the integration of the Mount Sinai Health System and to talk about the role that Mount Sinai St. Luke's plays in that integration and in the vision for uh, the Mount Sinai Health System. Uh, I'm gonna, I have a few prepared remarks uh, that I will make um, and then when I'm done, I'm gonna open it up for uh, question and discussion. Uh, and we'll be here for as long as there are questions and as long as there are people who uh, have things on their mind that they wanna say. So again, welcome, and I want to thank Drs. Uh, Davis and Charney for coming here to Mount Sinai St. Luke's. And I want to thank the staff for taking time from your busy schedule to attend this important town hall discussion about the integration of the former Continuum Hospitals with the Mount Sinai Health System and the future of the Mount Sinai, uh, Mount Sinai St. Luke's within that system. We're involved in a period of truly discontinuous change. Healthcare is in the midst of seismic changes, the likes of which we haven't really seen, frankly, since the passage of Medicare and Medicaid back in the mid 1960s. Specifically, the healthcare system in the United States faces three challenges. It faces the challenge of access and the level of uninsured Americans, it faces the challenge of cost, and it faces the challenge of providing high quality care given the amount of money that we spend as a delivery system. There have been dramatic changes that have occurred over the last several years to address these challenges from the passage of the Affordable Care Act and the change in the way payers are starting to uh, uh, compensate hospitals and providers for the care that we provide. Moving from paying us for the services we render to moving to paying us for quality and to maintain a reduced cost. Yet. We live today in what the American Hospital Association calls the gap. The world between one where payments are made on the basis of volume and one where payments are uh, made on the basis of value. All right, we're in that gap. Um, and life in the gap can be extremely challenging. All right, we've seen this all too often with the record number of hospital closures in New York City over the last several years. But life in the gap can present immense opportunity to creative alliances and partnerships and affiliations and acquisitions and mergers to create a new future, to transform previously struggling hospitals and to create truly integrated care delivery systems that strive each and every day to achieve the triple aim of better health, better care, and lower cost through improvement. And this is the central aim of the new Mount Sinai Health System with we here at Mount Sinai St. Luke's in partnership with our colleagues in the system and at the medical school will play a central and crucial role. So what's our strategy? Well, to understand or to, to lay out or to think about our strategy, you first have to understand what's the mission and the vision of the Mount Sinai Health System within which we now play an important role. The mission of the system is simple. It's to provide compassionate patient care with seamless coordination and to advance medicine through unrivaled education, research, and outreach in the many diverse communities we serve. And its vision, the vision of the system, is to continue to grow and challenge convention through our pioneering spirit, scientific advancements, forward-thinking leadership, and collaborative approach to providing exceptional patient care in the many unique communities we serve. So how do we fit into this mission, and how do we fit into this vision? Well, first of all, Mount Sinai St. Luke's has a long, accomplished, and respected history. We have many firsts here over the 15 decades of our existence. And this is a history that continues to resonate with our physicians, our nurses, our frontline staff, and our surrounding communities. Mount Sinai St. Luke's, in my view, has a terrific employee culture. Leaders of the Mount Sinai system like to call us the little engine that could while members of our team simply like to say that we're family. Mount Sinai St. Luke's has a proud and unwavering commitment through its 15 decades of, of existence of serving the underserved, not just serving them, 
But doing so, and I'm quoting a speaker at, at St. Luke's Alumni Association dinner from last week, with excellence. It's by building on this, the history of our hospital, by energizing our hospital with our unique can-do, get it done, no task is too great enthusiasm for patient care, and by furthering excellence in the care for the underserved, that we, lead, we will lead the way in securing the mission and achieving the vision of the Mount Sinai Health System. So what's the plan? Number one, we need to grow our services. Dr. Davis and Dr. Charney talk frequently about the turnaround at Mount Sinai a decade ago. And they had the wise understanding that hospitals cannot cut their way to prosperity. Growth is essential. But we have to grow selectively and smartly and striking the right balance between the needs of our health system and the concerns of our community. Cardiology. Mount Sinai St. Luke's has a long and proud history of excellence and dominance in cardiac services, a history that we have failed to sustain in the present. No more. With the full support and strength of the health system and with a newly energized team of clinicians, we can remake cardiac services at Mount Sinai St. Luke's to meet today's demands, building our EP program, recruiting accomplished interventional cardiologists, and striving to be a high quality cardiac center and an integral part of the Mount Sinai, of Mount Sinai Heart here on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. <coughs> Behavioral health. There's an almost infinite demand in New York City for high quality behavioral health services. And Mount Sinai St. Luke's will be both a clinical and research hub for behavioral health on an inpatient and an outpatient basis within the Mount Sinai health system. This fall, in fact, we will begin the process of consolidating child and adolescent psychiatric units from the Mount Sinai Hospital to Mount Sinai St. Luke's. And as recently as this morning, we were discussing further opportunities for growth within the service line. Emergency services. Mount Sinai St. Luke's, as you all know, has one of the most active emergency departments anywhere in the country. And we are the health system's only trauma center. Maintaining the trauma center designation is obviously important, but it's going to be even more important to build on the great work of our emergency department professionals to do, e uh, do what they do every day and to make our emergency department the best run in Manhattan and a destination emergency department on the Upper West Side. Cancer screening and related cancer services. We know that the communities that we serve uh, suffer from uncaptured and un undiagnosed cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer, lung cancer, et cetera. So we're going to partner with the Mount Sinai Cancer Service Line to expand as appropriate our cancer screening capabilities, which in turn should support both this hospital and the entire health system. Diabetes care and bariatric surgery. We also know that the communities we serve here in West Harlem suffer disproportionately from obesity and diabetes. We have an exceptional bariatric program that I believe we can leverage and expand through greater outreach to our uh, surrounding neighborhoods, connecting possible patients to a comprehensive program to help them manage their weight and eat, eat healthy, and if no choices remain, access high quality bariatric surgeons to address their struggles to maintain a healthy weight. Inpatient physical medicine and rehabilitation or subacute care and or subacute care. We have a very strong inpatient physical medicine and rehabilitation unit. Working with the health system and with the medical school leadership, we need to determine if there are opportunities to expand this unit or perhaps to create a subacute unit to help us manage patients that would otherwise need hard to find nursing home care to rehabilitate from injuries, strokes, falls, and other conditions. So in addition to growth, we need to create true patient value. And we're going to do that here through something called Lean, which I've discussed with you in email and, and also in person. Lean is a comprehensive framework through which we're going to demonstrate respect for our patients and each other through the elimination of waste from our operational and clinical processes. All right, and lean is going to be that framework where we're going it, to, it, it'll cover everything from strategic planning to process improvement to auditing and to follow up. Lean is not simply a set of tools, nor should it be a view, viewed as a flavor of the month. If done right, 
If implemented organization-wide, Lean will be critical to our becoming a high reliability organization, a hospital where the right outcomes occur because the right processes are in place. And as Dr. Barrick, the former head of the Institute for Healthcare Improvement and also for the Centers for Medicaid and Medicare and Medicaid Services said, the reduction of waste, which is really the hallmark of lean, is the quality dimension of our time. We're going to use lean to transform our operations and focus specifically on reducing a key waste for patients, and that's wait times. Whether we're talking about wait times in the ambulatory setting or whether we're talking about excessive length of stay on our inpatient units. We're going, to lean, we're going to use Lean to try to drive quality, to undertake any number of quality improvement initiatives, but initially with a special focus on implementing efficient and effective processes to reduce and ideally eliminate hospital-acquired conditions such as central line-acquired bloodstream infections. At my prior hospital, we were able to use a very simple bundle, a very efficient Lean bundle, to reduce uh, uh, CLASBs by almost 72%. There's no reason why we cannot do that here. The health system itself has set as a five-year goal to be number one in New York and in the top decile in the country for all major publicly re reported quality measures. That is a big, bold, audacious goal, and we have at St. Luke have got to do our part to achieve it. We're going to le use lean to help improve patient experience. We want to streamline hospital processes always with the customer and the patient in mind. And as importantly, by engaging staff, not just leadership, not just leadership, but staff throughout the organization in making our operations uh, optimal and serving the needs of our patients. And even more simply, we must do the things necessary to build patient loyalty, whether we're talking about purposeful hourly rounding, maintaining clean rooms, regularly engaging uh, patients. Smiles make a huge difference. Remember, everyone in this organization, from physicians, nurses, maintenance, housekeeping, dietary, all staff, everyone, myself included, must contribute to making our operations as smooth as possible, to strengthening our quality, and to providing our patients each and every day with an exceptional healthcare experience. Third, we need to create here at St. Luke's the healthcare delivery system of the future. Beyond the selected growth initiatives discussed above, and, be, and, and before and beyond the efficient operation of our hospital. We need to look ahead and with each step we take, keep the future front and center. So five years from now, Mount Sinai St. Luke's is not only going to have to serve its traditional communities, but we're going to have new and emerging communities to serve as well. Many of these residents are occupying the apartments and the condominiums that are being built in the surrounding neighborhoods right next door, in fact, at an amazing clip. Five years from now, Mount Sinai St. Luke's with the rest of the Mount Sinai Health System will also have to make the transition from its reliance to, on payments based on volume to payments based on value, where we have to demonstrate day in and day out high quality and that we can do the service for low cost. So to, the, to these ends, Mount Sinai St. Luke's, we're going to we're gonna have to reconfigure this hospital. We need higher acuity, acuity services. We need more efficient operations. And we need to reimagine our ambulatory platform. We need a new emergency room. We want a medical mall for our outpatient services, urgent care as an alternative to avoidable emergency room visits, and a robust interconnected network of primary care f uh, practices supporting this hospital and helping the hospital manage the care of its patient populations. The success of Mount Sinai St. Luke's is really critical to the success of the Mount Sinai Health System. Again, at the alumni dinner that I attended last week, one of the speakers described the, quote, perception of the potential of Mount Sinai St. Luke's. Perception of the potential. Now look, we all know we have challenges. We live them each and every day. But I really believe that if we can fill in the strategic plan that I've essentially sketched, if we can implement lean throughout this hospital, and if we can begin to build the Mount Sinai St. Luke's of the future, working hand in hand, side by side with the Mount Sinai Health System, I believe we will succeed. So beginning this June, I'm gonna lead an effort with a number of my team members, and I talked about this in my first email to all of you, 
to work with administrative leadership in each of the clinical departments to develop strategies to close our budgetary shortfalls for growth, for improvement in our operations, quality, and patient experience, and for strategic repositioning to build a hospital in the future. And this effort will be informed by and help to inform the strategic planning at the Mount Sinai health system level. And when we succeed, the perception of our potential will become reality. And our potential as a hospital, a hospital with a history dating back to the 19th century, will finally and fully be fulfilled. Thank you. So with that, um, we are here, and I want to open it up for questions, comments, and, and thoughts uh, uh, to the audience at large. So I'd like to know, what are the future plans uh, for the training of medical students at uh, St. Luke's Hospital? So we're committed to uh, you know, growing the medical student experience here. The, uh, given when we came together in October, uh, you know, there was not a lot of time to change the curriculum and the rotations for this July. So this is just the, the beginning. Uh, David Muller, our Dean for Medical Education, uh, is working through, uh, with leaders throughout the system to redesign uh, and increase the portfolio of opportunity for the Mount Sinai medical students, both in terms of third year requirements and uh, fourth year electives. So th this year is a transition year in terms of training the medical students, but we're well aware of the tremendous uh, positive reputation of the training experience that Columbia students had here and at Roosevelt. Uh, we're also working on rotations at Beth Israel where Albert Einstein students um, have rotated. We also think there's the opportunity, and we'll be working on this, uh, to enhance the uh, elective experience for medical students around the country and around the world. And, and so we'll be working with you on that because now we have unprecedented capacity uh, for the training of medical students at Mount Sinai and throughout the country and throughout the world. Uh, this will also be a financial opportunity because uh, many top medical schools around the world highly value a training experience in Manhattan. And so we think that here at St. Luke's, at Roosevelt, at BI, as well as Mount Sinai Hospital, this will be a destination globally for the medical student experience. Yes, in reference to your uh, ambulatory care facility, uh, do you have any plans on expanding the Mount Sinai ambulatory care facilities here on the uh, west side? So in, in, in my remarks, what I, what I had indicated um, is that the leadership of the Mount Sinai Health System, Dr. Davis, Dr. Charney, have made it very clear that to the extent that there are resources made available from the sale of one or more of buildings that are underutilized or un underutilized here on this campus, that those funds would be made available to us to essentially reimagine this hospital. And uh, 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 growing and building out an ambulatory presence um, is really key to the future of this hospital and it's the direction that healthcare is going. If you could speak to professional development opportunities during this transition period, any, any words that you can speak to related to um, promotions, abilities to participate in professional development, um, activities like conferences, um, exchanges, and so on. In terms of your question about professional development, um, I, I, have, I have a couple of general comments. You know, first, uh, uh, philosophically, I am, I, am, I, I am extremely supportive of professional development opportunities. Uh, one of the things that was attractive in coming and joining the Mount Sinai Health System was precisely that it was so interconnected, the, the, the healthcare piece was so interconnected with the education piece, uh, because I believe very strongly in that. We intend on recruiting new faculty to Mount Sinai St. Luke's in that space, for sure, uh, and uh, faculty here will be involved in that recruitment process. In addition, there'll be other areas that we're going to enhance research, not just by moving researchers from one place to another uh, throughout the system, uh, but to be in recruitment mode. For example, in the area of substance abuse, which is a has a very important footprint here, uh, we have 
established a search committee, and we have a number of top candidates, both within Manhattan and around the country, uh, to take a leadership role, in fact, the leadership role, for uh, the addiction programs th throughout the system. And uh, that person, I suspect, will be located uh, here much of the time. So this is uh, in process to build the research programs here through recruitments, through enhancing research already that has been done here, as, as well as ha having some of our faculty that have been based at Mount Sinai come over here. We're also you know, looking at the services and research space from, from the perspective of entrepreneurship, company formation. Um, we, we've looked at the space and we have several initiatives at Mount Sinai that we think can possibly also be located here in the area of genomics and molecular pathology as we work to develop new molecular tests and uh, to be a hub in genomic research and particularly as we move genomics uh, to the bedside. Uh, the school has invested well over $100 million in genomics, so we're, we're one of the top genomic centers in the United States right now. And we view the healthcare system as essentially a laboratory to take findings uh, related to new genes that place patients at risk, genes that tell us how to treat patients, and to move that to every corner of the health system. So a lot to come in the future. And the only thing that, that I would add um, is that in conversations uh, specifically with, uh, with Dean Charney, uh, you know, we, I've been encouraged to, to think about, and this is a conversation that we will have over the next several months, is how to align, you know, where our focus is going to be clinically with where our focus is going to be from a research perspective, with what the focus of our residencies and our training programs are going to be, which I think is, the, is absolutely the correct way to think about things, which is the strategic alignment of academics, research, and, and, and clinical care. That's hard. Uh, and, and that, too, takes time. But that's going to be part of the conversation that we're all going to have, because I think that's critical, also critically important for the future. Uh, Domingo Nunez, Department of Surgery. I just have a general question as to how you're going to measure the success of each uh, hospital, by what criteria, what outcomes, uh, what is the standard we're going to be held to as an institution, as a department, and as individuals? One is the way we have run Mount Sinai and what, the way we're going to run the health system is, is transparent. So it's going to be clear as we develop the strategic plan and we uh, develop our goals together, uh, that it's going to be clear what the goals are, what the metrics are for performance. We're very data-driven. That patient satisfaction is going to be the core, that w which we need to improve, and that we work together as a team. And, and one of the key principles of being an effective team, in fact, even a great team, is that you can't tolerate underperformance. So we, we hold all all of us at the, at the leadership level, throughout the organization, to a high bar of performance. But you'll know what we're looking for. We'll do it together as a team. But if you underperform, there are consequences. And that's true for all of us, that we really need to work together to make this a great hospital and a great healthcare system. Right. So to address surgery, um, I don't know your specific concern. You're the vice chair, aren't you, surgery? Right. Um, you know, we know that the, a lot of the practices here are largely Medicaid practices. So we don't expect that your compensation, like it might be in other parts of our system, is uh, revenues minus expenses, because your revenues aren't going to cover that. So we expect that the work RVUs are going to put people in an appropriate percentile. Um, so everybody's responsibility is to make sure that their work RVUs are at the level that's appropriate for what we need to survive and treat the community that we live in and sustain this hospital. My name is Tom Sinclair. I work at the uh, Addiction Institute uh, down at Roosevelt. I used to work on Clark 6 here for a number of years. And uh, I was curious, one of the rumors I keep hearing time and time again is that uh, eventually the plan is to consolidate all the addiction services at St. Luke's. Uh, I wanted to just ask bluntly if there's any truth to that or if that's just a rumor. Um, 
Here's what we know. We know that in an integrated system, savings come from consolidating programs in single places. Uh, or because we have to serve well, many of the hospitals, all of Manhattan and some parts of Brooklyn, we just have to think carefully about can we afford to have parallel services in places that are just a few miles apart. Um, obviously, we can't have all the services that we have at Mount Sinai, at St. Luke's, and at Roosevelt. That just, that's just an, a, an equation for failure. So I don't know down the road whether there'll be all the addiction services in this hospital or not. I don't know whether that's going to be the best thing for the system. But we should be open to the possibility that it could happen. And other things could happen that will consolidate services in order to make sure that we can continue to serve our communities and be viable. And, and I only want to add to that uh, and emphasize actually the a point that Dr. Davis made, which is that you know we all have our interests and our desires and we think this should be here and that should be there or you know the, the inclination that services you know we have we, we have uh, uh, full service hospitals everywhere and as dr davis indicated the whole reason we're a system is to not have that okay is to have a centers of excellence within the system where certain hospitals do certain things and other hospitals do other things so i think key to successful strategic planning on our part and on the part of the Mount Sinai Health System is that everything is on the table. Everything is on the table for discussion because we have to come up with the right mix, the optimal plan in order to be maximally successful. Yeah. For instance, and I would say with you know, the addiction services, we're in the process of developing a strategic plan. So we'll figure out you know, where's the best place to do inpatient substance abuse care and how to meet the various communities that we now have to serve in terms of outpatient programs. The flip side of what I've said around consolidation, you, you, heard, heard, you heard carefully when Arthur talked about um, our plans for cardiac services here. I mean, we are going to put cardiac services back on the map here. You're going to see in the next six months an influx of new physicians with big practices that are going to be coming down with bringing a lot of patients. Um, so there are going to be changes. But don't think that everything is going to be diminished somewhere. It's going to be growing here, too. There are going to be some great things that are going to happen. And part of the reason the great things are going to happen here is I hear from my staff who's been working here great things about the people who work here. I mean, terrific attitude, hardworking, committed people who get things done. I'm very happy that you guys are in the system now. I think we can do great things together. But we're just going to have to be flexible. It was nice to hear that. Um, I wonder if you would consider posting two signs, one on 113th Street, one on 114th Street that states, hospital, please drive slowly. I think my, my advice would be that what we ought to focus on is how do we, how do we organize our um, a, a frontage to Amsterdam <laughs> Avenue, okay, to it, you know, create friendly, open entrees into ambulatory care into the hospital, so it's very clear where people need to go. I think I think the big problem is when you look at the front of the hospital, you can't tell where you're supposed to go. It's unclear. All right, it's 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 actually sort of unclear. It's a hospital almost. You know, you have to really squ squint to see it. Doc 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 Doctor Doctor Davis. I mean, I, I want to stress this. Dr. Davis, when he's met with me and he's met with the marketing team, has talked about any number of things relative to St. Luke's, but he, one of his top emphases is precisely that. How do we create visibility and a presence and an image on Amsterdam Avenue that's going to entice people to come in and to, and to see this hospital differently? Then you'll start to, start, start to change at least pedestrian traffic patterns in a way that becomes more manageable. So I appreciate your question that you asked it. Um, but the point, when we think about signage, we think about finding the place. Um, you know, what are we going to do to really upgrade the entryway so people can recognize this? Um, 
My name is David Ferris. Uh, I didn't hear HIV AIDS mentioned um, when you talked about the different service areas. We have about 3,000 outpatients based here, lives under management. We do about 700 discharges a year in HIV just here at St. Luke's. Just wondering about the future uh, for that uh, group of patients. Thank you. Sure. So, you know, our HIV program is actually one of the best known, if not the best known, in the city in, in the in the in the city of New York. And uh, there is no um, ex there, there is no desire or intent to in any way diminish that. In fact, we, we need to we need to to, to build the presence. Um, that would be part of, you know, a, a HIV AIDS, as you know, a, a, is now a, a chronic disease. As a chronic disease, it's managed more on the ambulatory setting than on the inpatient setting. In, in being managed on the ambulatory setting, that becomes part of how we think about our ambulatory platform and how we think about the services we're going to be providing in the future on an ambulatory basis. Right. And, and that is an area that we are going to enhance research. So we, uh, here and throughout the system, we think that we're now, as a system, responsible for more HIV patients than any other health system in the United States. We recently recruited Judy Aberg from NYU to be Division Chief of Infectious Disease for the system. And as you know, she's a HIV expert, and as part of her package, uh, she now has the ability to recruit other researchers in HIV, which will definitely impact here. So hopefully you'll interface with her, and we know that HIV here is a gem, and we want to we want to make it better. Hi, uh, Sanford Litwin, uh, cardiac anesthesia. <laughs> um, uh, the services have been getting shifted. Uh, the surgical services are being shifted a little bit. Um, orthopedics is now more primarily down at Roosevelt. Um, and hearing, obviously, that uh, cardiac is going to come up here, possibly bigger volumes, is there um, uh, other thoughts on to what those services are? Because obviously, as we build forward, we need to increase our surgical volume. Are we going to see an uptick in different types? Obviously, I think you'd mentioned uh, uh, bariatrics, but anything else in, in the thought process there? So, uh, you know, the, the, the this, the way the system looks at things um, is that, uh, you know, Roosevelt Hospital, Mount Sinai Roosevelt is, is really going to be the, the surgical hub here on the, on, on, on the west side. Um, and so my counterpart, Dr. Fledow, uh, is actively recruiting some really great surgeons um, to build, build the various surgical programs over at, at, at Mount Sinai Roosevelt. That, that being said, I think here at St. Luke's, again, it's it's looking at key niche programs that I think we can build. Bariatrics, I think, is one of them. I will say um, breast surgery is a, a, a another one, just as an example. I think we have to be thoughtful here, though, at St. Luke's, because I think the key is to, it, for, particularly on the surgical side, is to find niches and, and key places where we can play a role recognizing that our role is a little different than the role that Roosevelt is going to play, the role that Mount Sinai uh, proper is going to play, the role that, 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 that BI is going to play. So again, you know, the, the, I think the key clinical emphases here at Mount Sinai and St. Luke's, at least thus far in my thinking, are, car are cardiology, our behavioral health, our uh, emergency services, are uh, dealing with weight loss, obesity, bariatrics, uh, and potentially inpatient physical medicine and, and rehabilitation. We may expand that. There may be other opportunities. There may be niche opportunities, but I think that's the way that we have to think about it. Uh, as that's the last question, I want to make one comment. Um, I feel very fortunate that Arthur Gianelli was able to be recruited here. I think you will too. Uh, I also think it's important that we have a person who's president who's full-time here, which is why we have a president now at St. Luke's and another president at Roosevelt. And we did that even though we knew it was added expense because we think hands-on is really important. But it also means we'd be making a mistake, management, if we didn't empower the president here. So when you talk to Arthur Gianelli, you should know that you're talking to us. This isn't perhaps like 555 or whatever that meant to people. Um, uh, we've got a lot of things to do in our system. And if I don't trust the people that we've hired to be effective and to be empowered, we've made a big mistake. 
So when you're talking to Arthur, you're talking to me and Dennis. He's the president. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you for coming. <laughs>